Hi everybody. I made this ornament for a friend who always gets these for uh, wedding showers. She she puts a bow on the hook and pins it to the bride at the shower, which is kind of cute. And then they can use it afterwards for an ornament. So here I'm starting with the bride's body. As you can see, just roll a rounded triangle, kind of curve it to the side. And then we're making the shoes at the bottom. And you can just kind of follow the video and watch how I do it. And you can make the dress fancy any way you want. But this is just kind of a basic of how I do it. And you really don't need a lot of tools. Put the arm on. Now we're going to add the groom's pants, which is black. And you just roll out the clay and fold it over. And you have his legs. And then just put the shoes on the bottom. Make black shoes. And a lot of this will be covered with everything else we're going to put on. And this ornament is for a bride and groom who are both graduates of the University of South Carolina. And so she wanted something to represent the University of South Carolina, of which my son is also a graduate. Now it's kind of hard to see the shirt, but there it is. <laughs> As I said, quite a bit of their bodies are going to be covered. So you don't have to be too precise about that because they'll be holding the bouquet of flowers. Now I put these pieces on the top because it extends their heads up a little bit because you want them to have a neck. You don't want their heads sitting right on top of their shoulders. And he's going to have his bow tie there. And now. Now we're going to add their heads so you can pretty much see that I am using Super Sculpey for the heads and if you want to do different skin colors just you know pick your clay and do the different skin colors which usually what I like to do if I do African American heads I'll, I'll mix a little bit of Super Sculpey in with the brown. You can make the different tones you know so you can see that and it comes out very nice and just add the round balls to the tops of the bodies as you can see and there we are and let's see now we're going to go ahead and do the hair the bride has the darker brown hair the groom has a lighter brown hair so I so I lightened the clay a little bit for him and I just place it on top like this and then I use the needle tool to make the hair well I guess I kind of went off camera there sorry and you just use the needle tool to make like lines to show the hair so you can see it there and for the bride I just roll out a, a snake and just or a rope you know whatever you want to call it and I just fold it over twist it and put it on there we go and one thing when you're making these ornaments don't just place the clay on top of another piece of clay. You have to really press it on to make sure that they bond together when they're baking. Because you don't want to take your ornament out of the oven. Everything has baked and then everything just falls off. Now I make 
the little veil for the bride. And I just just do the same way like I did the hair. And you you can just make a flat veil if you want, you know, whatever you want to do. You know, use your imagination. You can figure out what you want to do. One of the best tools I find is a knitting needle. Get yourself a knitting needle or a few different sizes. You won't believe how often you will use them when you're working with clay. Now I make banners for this ornament. It goes across the bottom that will have their name. This is a brayer or roller that I got many, many, many years ago from Pamper Chef couldn't remember the name, Pam Pampered Chef. It's been, I've had it for more than 20 years, so I don't even know if they still have it. And you know, you don't have to do this exactly the way I'm doing it. You can improvise, do what you want. Well, I apologize for going off the camera again. This is fairly new to me and I'm starting to get the hang of it to make sure I'm staying on camera. But what I'm doing right now is I'm putting the little banner piece on the bottom of the heart. There it is. <laughs> The red and the green are going to be for the buffet, buffet, bouquet, not the buffet. They're not going to eat it. Sorry. It's been a long day. And I use the garlic press to squeeze the green through, but you don't have to use a garlic press. You can texturize it any way you want. But of course, first I'm going to make the little hearts. Um, to cut the little hearts out, I use Kemper cutters. They're um, K-E-M-P-E-R. And you can get them online or at Michael's, any craft store, Hobby Lobby, AC Moore. I don't know which one's near you. But the best thing to do is just Google it. And again, they're Kemper cutters, K-E-M-P-E-R. And you can usually get them in a package of different sizes. And again, remember, press that clay on. Make sure you press it on well. You don't want it falling apart.
I use quite a bit of white clay in my ornaments and I do use Sculpey 3 and Primo but I do want to say that if you're going to use Sculpey products don't use the original Sculpey. It's a nice white color but it just is a little bit too brittle. Like I said you don't want your creations to fall apart and the original Sculpey is just after it bakes it's just a little bit too and it feels kind of chalky too but I love Sculpey products and Super Sculpey and Sculpey 3 really are my choice for making ornaments but it's because I have arthritis in my hands and this, they really get to a nice consistency after I knead the dough you have to condition, well I shouldn't say need, I'll have to say condition the dough. The dough, it's not dough. I don't know what, where I'm going with this, sorry. You need the, okay folks, I'm going to leave this in because it's just such bloopers, but you have to condition the clay, not knead the dough. This is not dough, it's polymer clay. But make sure you condition your clay before you use it because that can also cause problems after baking if you don't condition your clay. And you see I'm positioning the the star. Wow, I'm really out of, they're not stars, they're hearts. Come on Maria, get your act together. Okay, trust me, I have not been drinking. I had a bad fall and I'm just a little, I'm not even loopy from the pain pills because I didn't take any today, but anyway must be a residual effect but you can position the hearts any way you want This is a garlic press I've had, a, oh gosh, I must have this more than 30 years. Uh, my mother got it for me when she and her sister went to Germany to visit family. And you can see it's broken and I've put wire in for a hinge, the hinge broke. I've used it so much and I have all different garlic presses for different colors. And this is my pr garlic press for the green, which I really, I use it the most for the green. All right, we're putting his bow tie on. I almost forgot it. I added a little hair. It looked a little bare right in that area. So
Sorry folks, I'm a little off camera again. There we go. And make sure you press that green on. You don't want it just sitting on there. I know I keep emphasizing that, but I just don't want you to have your ornament fall apart. To make the little roses, I just roll out some clay, flatten it, and then you just kind of roll it up. I mean, there are fancier ways to do roses, but these are very tiny, so you don't really need to do it. And you, you're not going to put too many on there. Kind of roll it up like a jelly roll. Make sure they're on there real good. And this is the game. These are the game cocks. I know it looks weird, go cocks, but that's that's University of South Carolina mascot, and it's they're the game cocks. And now I'm going to put a little game cock on that heart on the right. course you're not going to be doing this on your ornament you put on whatever you want or just leave it plain you can even add more little red hearts I have to say, the smaller you make something, the harder it is to make. This was a little bit of a challenge. I've made bigger Gamecocks, but this was a little bit of a challenge. And he's not perfect, but you can tell what he is. And for those of you who are wondering why I don't have a southern accent and I live in South Carolina, it's because I grew up in Connecticut and moved to South Carolina about 40 years ago. And my son, who grew up in South Carolina and went to the University of South Carolina, I don't think he has an accent, but he got a job at Brown University and everyone in Providence tells him he has a southern accent, but I don't hear it. Maybe you do hear a southern accent in me. I don't know. You can fast forward through this part if, if you're bored with it. You know, I doubt very much that you'll be making a gamecock on your ornament. But if you want to see how I make it, just keep watching. But you can fast forward. And if you don't want to listen to me talk, just turn the sound off. I don't blame you.
And here we are putting a little nose on each of the people. Don't make the noses too big. Make them very tiny. I'm going to use the needle tool to make the mouth on each of them. And when you're doing people, always put some blush on their cheeks. It just looks so much better. Any blush will do. Oh, and if you've noticed, I've put the hook in. The hook is actually a paper clip, and it's coated with white plastic. And you can get those at Staples or Office Depot, any office supplies place. I think maybe even Walmart or any big stores would have them. Probably even uh, craft stores. It's always nice to match the the hook to the ornament. And there they are.